Hi Gemini, Sun, Moon, Ascendant, or Venus. This is Dane, and I am going to be doing your July 16th to the 31st, 2021 reading for you. Now I ask if this reading resonates with you, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. If you're interested in any of the cards that I'm using, they will be listed and linked in the description box below. Now before we begin this reading, let us clear the energy space, raising our own energy vibration and releasing any negativity. So take a nice deep breath in, exhaling whenever it feels comfortable for you. Releasing all negativity from the body like storm clouds. Letting yourself feel calm, centered, and at peace as we enter into this safe and loving space. Let's let the bowl sing as we see what the tarot has to say. Gemini. July 16th to the 30th, 31st, 2021, Gemini. July 16th to the 31st, 2021, Gemini. July 16th to the 31st, 2021, Gemini. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. Angels and spirit guides. Gemini. July 16th to the 31st, 2021, Gemini. July 16th to the 31st, 2021, Gemini. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. Angels and spirit guides. Gemini. July 16th to the 31st, 2021, Gemini. July 16th to the 31st, 2021, Gemini. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. Angels and spirit guides, angels and spirit guides. Gemini, July 16th to the 31st, 2021, Gemini. July 16th to the 31st, 2021, Gemini. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. Angels and spirit guides. Fantastic. At the bottom, we have our rooted self. The left-hand side is our inner self. The middle, our heart, our emotional self. The right-hand side, the public arena, the public self. So let's see what the cards have to say. We have the Six of Cups and the lovers. There's something about us that's very nostalgic during this time, and we can almost be very nostalgic for the person that we once were. So this can be this can be bittersweet for some Geminis, and for others it's going to be something of a looking looking back and regaining that sense of, of self that, that might have been lost along the way. Then we have the death card, which is Scorpio energy, time frame October 23rd to November 21st. The Empress, which is claiming a power we thought was lost very much reclaiming a voice and there's there's something about creativity birthing something forward into the world whether it be a child or whether it be our ideas ourselves there's a sense of the dying way of the old self the rebirth of the new and then there's this time of birth of creativity it's kind of like this time of of spring where everything starts coming up again and it's going it's interesting because we're we've if you're in the northern hemisphere, we've entered into to summer and we've entered into winter in the southern hemisphere. So there's there's an intensity here to us that's coming out. The the page of cups, water sign energy, Pisces, Scorpio, Cancer. If we have water sign energy within our charts or born on the cusp with cancer, this is going to come out quite profoundly, just as if we have Scorpio within our chart. That's going to come out profoundly during this time. The Seven of Wands, we have to not fight. There's going to be there's going to be a real sense of 
of a fighter spirit within us, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, but it can make trouble for us during this time. We have the Five of Cups, change your mind, change your life. The Chariot, the Cancer energy coming through, time frame June 21st to July 22nd. So right in the, the sphere for a bit of this, this reading, we have we have the Cancer energy coming forward. We have the Chariot coming forward. We have our thoughts taking wind, but taking wing, okay? But there's the sense of we have to change what we're looking at because it's going to be very easy during this time to get melancholy, to feel a bit blue, depressed, overwhelmed, anxious. So that's going to be something to be astoundingly mindful of during this time, especially in the public arena, because there's such an energy that says, I want you to move forward. I want you to go after and succeed and, and, just, and just absolutely win. But there's going to be another side of us that says, I can't. I can't do what I want to do because of... And it's because of our own selves getting in the way. It's it's hurt and it's fear. And it can be, you know, something that we need to talk to somebody about. But it, it's here. It's like, okay, if we change what we're looking at, we're going to change what we get. So let's see the chakra energy for this time. Gemini, July 16th to the 31st, 2021 Gemini. July 16th to the 31st, 2021 Gemini. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. Rebirth which makes sense. We have the death card right here. This dying way of the old self, the rebirth of the new. This is the earth star chakra coming through. And it's really saying here that at our roots, because the earth star chakra is located six inches below our feet at the, the essence of ourselves with our connection with the earth, this is going to be a time where we start to transform, where we start to see our own, own light, our own abilities, our own sense of self coming forward in a very real way, in a very honest way. And it can actually be a little bit too real and a little bit too honest for us at times where it gets to be overwhelming, where we think, am I, am I doing the right thing? Am I moving the right way? And there's going to be this phase of questioning. There is going to be this huge phase of questioning for ourselves around everything that we're doing. And so we have to really be mindful of that, where we're going to have this tendency to just take everything on and say, oh, it's, it's my fault, or I should have done better. I should have worked harder. And this is going to be a time where we have to be mindful of that because that will rob us of so much. And then let's look at the energy we have to be mindful of. What is the energy that Gemini needs to be mindful of? July 16th to the 31st, 2021, Gemini. What is the energy that Gemini needs to be mindful of? July 16th to the 31st, 2021, Gemini. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. Angels and spirit guides, angels. And that's the star. Oh, that's interesting. So it's kind of like be very mindful of somebody who promises you the sun, the moon, and the stars. There's, there's going to be a sense here of what we deeply long for is coming out. And it can be in a body image. It can be in our dreams, in our expressions of ourselves. And this is going to be a time where our wishes are really coming forward in a very intense way. And so with the star, we're going to see ourselves needing to be mindful of even our dreams, the, the sense that they can become overpowering. They can become more than our reality. So it is to be mindful of that. It's not to give up on our dreams at all, but it is to be very balanced within what we, we want from life and the way our dreams are, are coming to us in, in the waking world. And I don't know how to put that, that better. As somebody who believes very firmly in their dreams and in passion and in creativity, we don't want to lose that. Uh, and Spirit is making that clear, but Spirit is also making it clear that we can't let our dreams become our vulnerabilities. You know, there there's going to be such a drive to express and create and to, to bring something really beautiful into this world and, and around us that we're going to be really... Yeah, really susceptible to people who, you know, play off of that, to play off of what we have longed for for so long and play off of what we are so passionate about, but they're not passionate about it. They don't have the same dreams that we have, or they're going to use that dream in order to, to better themselves and then kind of push everybody, everything else and everybody else to the wayside. So do be mindful during this time. Now, the Six of Cups is a tricky card because the Six of Cups is a remembrance. The Six of Cups is this sense of the past coming forward. Now, it can be that we're we're in this time where we're remembering all the negative things said about us, all the things that we can't do, all the ways that we can't move forward. But there's also going to be the remembrance of all the things that we can do, all the, the beauty that we had once upon a time, and all the the power and the prosperity and, and the brilliance that is a part of our life and our soul and ourselves. So the, the Six of, of, of Cups comes into play. 
and we're going to be battling both things. We're going to be battling the voices from the past that were the the people who didn't believe in our dreams, who didn't believe in us, who didn't think we could move forward the way that we wanted to. And then there's going to be the, the Six of Cups that comes in and says, but don't you remember when you were so happy? And don't you remember when life was lighter and, and it felt like you could almost fly? And this is something that we're going to be dealing with. This is why it's going to be so easy in the public arena for us to fall into our minds and to fall into the past and to fall into the I'm just not good enough because the, the rest of the world is almost at times going to pale in comparison to our memories and to the dreams that we have and the, and the way that we want to move forward. And this will be for the good things. You know, this will be for the moments where we couldn't stop laughing and we laughed so hard that we cried. But this will also be for the moments where, you know, the person that we left didn't show up and we were so hurt that we cried. So just just making sure that we're aware of this for this time, it, it forewarns us and it arms us against against the sensitivity that comes forward. And it brings us to the lovers. It brings us to the to the essence of ourselves. So Gemini is represented by the lovers in the major arcana. And this is the duality of our personality. This is the intensity of our hearts and our souls. And this is the, the essence of who we are and where we want to be and how we open up our wings and are able to fly, but are also blessed and needing to know that there are at least two sides to every story. And there's a powerful way that we need to move forward in the expression of the beauty of the soul, the self, the, the brilliance and, and the understanding. This is going to be a time where we need to, to look at different roads with more openness and more honesty and to understand that people aren't going to come to situations in the same way that we are and honor, honor the differences is what a Gemini is about, you know, to honor the differences and then to not let the fear of people misunderstanding us overwhelm us so that we feel like almost I, I can't you know I can't express myself the way that I want to because people might misconstrue it or I can't be the person that I want to be because people won't see it the right way and that's that's where we have to have the death within our inner self during this time the dying way of the old self the rebirth of the new the sense of you know death is the great equalizer there's a poem that says six feet of earth make us all but one size and so this is going to be a time where we start to see the reality within existence that we are all of one size though the the path that we take forward is is quite different and this is going to be a time where we start to see ourselves who we once were you know falling apart and changing and becoming who we are today and there's there's going to need to be a mourning process or and there's going to be need to be a reintroduction process to who we are now and who we once were and where we want to be and this is a time I, I swear to you Gemini this is a time where dreams can feel more powerful than reality and the change that we are going through it, it can feel like it's happening just within our very soul within our our very self and like it's happening to us and we're just along for the ride so do be aware of that because it's having us come out with this transformation in the sense of you know it's never going to feel like enough. I never give enough energy here and I never give enough energy there and I never embrace enough. And yet there's this change coming us, coming forward with us and saying there is more here than you could ever realize. And there, there's more than enough. There is more than enough if you, if you dare to see it, if you dare to embrace it. And the Empress says, I'm claiming my throne. I'm claiming the throne I thought was lost. I'm claiming the power I, I thought I would never see. I'm claiming this part of me that was hidden away for so long and I, I refuse to be hidden away ever again. There is a sense of creation coming forward within us and to embrace that creation. And again, it could be, you know, the act of creation, the act of giving birth, but it can also be the act of creation of the act of creating something beautiful and meaningful and just even mundane into our world, but that is, is so needed, that is done in such a way where people might say, okay, yeah, but everybody smiles, but your smile lights up somebody's world. And so then it moves us to the page of cups in our heart. We are a student of our heart, this time more than any other time. And it, there's this raw sensitivity to us during this time. There's this intensity to us during this time. And we're going to get inspiration and we're going to get ideas from the most unlikely of places and spaces where we might sit there and think, well, this is so not me, but at this moment, this is so exactly where I need to be and exactly what I need to be hearing or exactly what I need to be taking in and exactly where I need to be embracing and expressing and, and gaining an understanding. And the page of cups comes in and starts to, to give us this knowledge. And it is, it is a sense of the heart speaking just purely of the heart. So here's the thing with, when the heart speaks for so many of us, the heart might speak 
in in music. The heart might speak in colors. The heart might speak in in fabrics and textiles. And it can it can be so different the way the heart speaks to us. But we have to see the way that our heart will be speaking to us during this time and take in that information. It can be that the heart speaks while we're doing our makeup. You know, it can be that the heart speaks while we're getting dressed in the morning. You know, it can be the heart speaks while we're writing or when we're outside or, you know, wh whenever it is, the heart will speak. And this is going to be a time where we need to listen. And it's going to speak in the most unlikely places, in the most unlikely ways. And we're going to think, is this a connection with the divine or is this just some sort of nonsense coming forward? But if it makes us feel more aware and more centered within our bodies, then of course it is the divine coming forward. And it is then leading us to this place of how do I stop battling? How do I stop battling everything that I have seen as a hurt, a pain, a disappointment? How do I stop battling and and stand within my power? Know when to fight and when to say, it's not even worth my time. These people will never understand. They will never see me for who I am. And I need to just, I need to fight when it's appropriate, but not when it's, not when it's just going to be every day and every day battle and every day hurt and every day pain and everything everything becomes overwhelming. So the seven of wands is telling us, when do I stand? And when do I, that, when do I step away? You know, when do I embrace what I love and what I want? And where, when do I fight? And when do I say enough? Because it's, it's very much, I'm just seeing what my great grandma used to always say is that you can't step on every crack or else you can't step on every stone or else you'll never get to the other side of the river. And so that's, that's going to be it here. It's like, I can't, I can't fight every battle. I just can't. Or I, I can't always be on guard. And we know it when our souls are on guard because we just feel tired and we feel overwhelmed. And it's like, oh my gosh, seriously, again? Like, when when do I get a break? But standing in our power and saying, but this is me, unapologetically, powerfully, rawly, this is who I am. And I get to embrace this, this fierceness, but I also get to embrace the part of me that just wants to live my life, that just wants to laugh and have fun. And, and not and not have to be so, so on guard. And that's going to be a powerful thing for our hearts to be, is just open and honest and us and expressing and, and, and raw and real. And then in the public arena, we have the Five of Cups and the Five of Cups says, change your mind and change your life. And that's going to be a really hard thing because there's, there's going to be a part of us that wants to just rip us apart. It's going to say, you can be better. And I'm doing this out of love. You know, I'm telling you that this isn't right out of love. And fair, you know, fair. We don't want to go around being fools, but if I'm always ripping myself down and never building myself up, it's not out of love. It's out of another battle that needs to be fought. It's out of, of fear and hurt and pain and disappointment. And this is going to be a time where enough is enough. Enough is enough. And I get to embrace, I get to embrace and turn around and see the two of cups right behind me, the minor arcana lover's card, the, the minor arcana embracing and and signifying of myself. And I get to see who I am, who I need to be, and what I need to discover. And it brings us to the chariot and it says, move forward, move forward bravely and fiercely, move forward openly and honestly, move forward with the shadowed self and the, the self that is seen day in and day out, the mess that we want people to think we are. And the person that we are at times that isn't lovely, <laughs> you know, that is, that is angry and frustrated and, and overwhelmed. And to say to the world, this is me, but to say to ourselves, this is me. This is who I need to be. This is where I need to be. This is the hurt and the pain and the realism. That is me. And that will always be me. And there's just going to be such a powerful shift that happens during this time. And when spirit says that it's a powerful shift, it doesn't have to mean that anybody else gets it, that anybody else sees it. It can be a powerful shift when we start to say, you know what? I always loved, you know, X, Y, Z. I always loved wearing high heeled, unbelievable shoes. I'm going to start doing that again. I always loved wearing my jewelry. Why has it been in a drawer forever? I always loved, you know, bright colors. Why am I always dressing in black? There are going to be little steps that we're going to take during this time. And I see it mostly around fashion, okay? Mostly around an external expression of self. But however we have that external expression of self, that is going to be the way that we start moving forward. That's going to be the way that we start saying, I'm reborn and I'm coming out of this dark cocoon into something beautiful and into something freeing and flowing. And that lets me fly in a way that I didn't think I would be able to fly. Our subconscious chakra message is the inner child, the heart chakra. And we see that at our roots. We're connecting with our inner child for better or for worse. And our heart chakra is saying, embrace with love, 
embrace with love who you once were. Because so often as adults, we're running away from the person we were as children. And you can't do it. You can't get to where you need to be. You can't run fast enough to change, to change the flow of time. And so here, the exercise that I love to do when the inner child comes up is to just visualize kneeling down with my arms open and the child that I once was running into, running into the arms of the woman I am today and just holding on so tight. And if the child that you once were doesn't like big hugs, you know, it's like, no, don't touch me. Thank you. You know, just sitting there, you know, telling a story to each other, talking, listening, sharing a hot chocolate, you know, doing something like that where you remind yourself that you love every single stage of who you are and who you were. Because who you were is who you are today in, in a different shell, in a different form. It leads us then to our subconscious energy that roots us. And that's the Two of Cups, the Minor Arcana Lover's card. Ourselves come th through right at our root, and then we come through again. This is saying, I have to be me. Openly, honestly, really, messily me. To heal, to embrace, to discover, to become. To, to have a blessing given to us. And to be able to take that blessing and say, this is the duality of me. The sacred masculine, the sacred feminine, the, the sacred of self and soul. And this is how I need to walk forward. This is who I need to be for me, for how I discover and how I become. And then we have our inner selves. And our inner self subconscious message is the six of pentacles. Things need to be fair and balanced. There's, there's something about us and, and we can feel it. It's just not balanced inside. And it's either we're t we feel like we're taking it and then we feel like we're giving and it, there's, there's no middle ground and we need to find that middle ground. We need to find that balance realism. And it brings us then to our subconscious emotional self, which is strength. And when we embrace our hearts, we embrace our strength. We embrace our becoming. But there's something here about humanity. There's something here about expression of heart and soul and duality of self and this opening up of our world and saying, but this is what I want and this is what I need and this is where I want to be within my life. And to see our hearts truly and honestly is going to be one of the best things that we can ever do. And it's going to take strength because so often if we just busy ourselves and you know, we say that strength is how big our muscles are and how, you know, tiny our waists and everything like that. That that's one form of strength. But the strength that's here is the strength that is earned. The the strength through love and compassion. The strength through an open heart and a a giving soul. And this is going to be a time where we have to, to find the balance of when am I being strong and caring and when am I being taken advantage of? You know, when when are people, you know, looking at my good nature and saying I see you, you know, I see your heart, I see your soul. And when are people looking at my good nature and saying, I can take more from you because you're kind of like an easy mark. It moves us then to our subconscious public arena energy. And it's the four of pentacles. Now the four of pentacles here is very interesting because it's, it's very beautiful. It's this little child finding this money, finding this prosperity. And there's going to be a part of us. It's always going back to the child that we once were. It's finding this money. It's finding this prosperity. It's finding this bounty because the four of pentacles for me in like every other deck is this, the sense of empiric energy, the sense of this treasure chest that's found when we're little being stolen away from us, slowly and steadily drained by toxic people that come into our lives, toxic events and toxic things. And during this time, we're going to be saying enough is enough. I get to let the richness in and I get to embrace and envelop the wealth that was me when I was born. And that is me today. our subconscious energy to be mindful of is the Prince of Swords. Now we're represented by the swords in the Minor Arcana. And the swords are rash and brash and beautiful. They are the defenders, the warriors. And this is what we have to be mindful of. We have to be mindful of just charging forward and saying, you know, something needs to move. I'm going to move it now. You know, the, the Knight of Swords can be the slayer of demons, the slayer of dragons, the, the person who, who takes away the negativity. But if we act too quickly, it's going to be one of those times, and we all have had it as air sign energies, 
where we think, I, I really should have thought that through. I, I acted and I felt like I needed to change something. And yes, things have changed, but not the way I wanted them to, not in the direction I wanted them to be in. So we have to be, we have to be very mindful of that during this time. And we're going to be really drawn to people who just act, who just are like, I just went for it. I did it. It worked. It's wonderful. And that's great for them. That's great for them. But it's not going to be the same. There, there needs to be this gentle harmony that comes into play when it comes to us during this time. And there needs to be this coming together of our child self with our adult self to be powerful and beautiful and to embrace these extremes of soul. All right, Gemini, I hope this reading has resonated with you. I wish you nothing but light, love, peace, and happiness. May harmony always be with you. I'm sending loving, healing energy to each and every one of you. I love you all and stay safe. Let's end this reading with a meditation, a clearing away of negative energy, a raising of our positive energy as, as we embrace who we are, as we embrace ourselves. So take a nice deep breath in, exhaling whenever it feels comfortable for you. May you move forward in peace and in harmony, Gemini.